Bon jam di desa. Hey, how the devil are you? Whoa, right, hoi. Now, this is, uh, I think, the second video I've made on that hi-fi haul I had about a month or so back. Um, I'm going to try and squeeze them in here and there when I get the time and the chance to do it. So this is my second video on the hi-fi haul. And you can have a look at that video. I'll put a link here and in the description box below, if I could say that word. Description. There you go. And this is the Pioneer MJ D508 mini disc player. Now this came out in 1999 and I think it was discontinued in about 2005, 2006. And mini disc itself, uh, I think they stopped manufacturing them around about 2011 and stopped selling them in the, uh, in about 2013, I believe. So that was the end of mini disc. I mean, it didn't really stand a chance back in the day. I think it came out in 1992. Uh, but also what came out at that time was MP3. Ooh, MP3, you, why you little, right? And uh, MP3 came out, and also, not long after, it was recordable CD. Now, you think about it, these machines weren't cheap. Uh, you th this mini disc player here, uh, I can only find it in US dollars, but this was selling for about $375 back in 1999, uh, which... Uh, Adjusted for inflation, it's probably around about 650 to 700 US dollars, around about 650 pounds. And it's not high-end, okay? It's not lo-fi, it's, it's not a budget model, but it, it's not an audiophile high-end model. So you say a mid-fi. So for a, uh, for, for a mid-range product, quite expensive. And also when you think about it, at the time, I think a year later or so, this came out. Pioneer released a, uh, they had a few, I think, anyway, but this particular one, it was a multi-disc, three multi-disc CD changer to recordable CD, which it, I can't remember the exact price of that back when it released in 2000, but adjusted for inflation today is £450. So 200 quid cheaper than the mini-disc player, okay? And you've got a CD changer, plus you can re uh, record to CD as well. And then they had... CD Walkmans, CD players in the car, didn't stand a chance. And you think about it, right? If I was able to, if the recorder was able to uh, record MP3, um, you could fit up to 150 tracks on that CD. I'm not sure if I was 320 kilobytes or 192, I'm not sure. Um, so 150 tracks, what's the average album? 12 to 15 tracks, nine to 10 albums on one CD, if it was MP3. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like, what? So, very hard for Minidisc to compete. Um, but still, you know, I still think it's pretty cool. It's, and especially with its small form factor. You look here, you've got Piton. Yes, come on, Piton, you know it. Um, and you've got, uh, there's a Minidisc there. Size comparison, you can see the difference. You know, it's quite a small form factor, isn't it? But crazily enough, uh, some independent artists are still releasing um, their albums onto mini discs. So they're quite rare, but you can find them if you're going to have a look and a hunt around. Uh, and some independent artists are releasing their albums on mini discs. So pretty cool. Anyway, let's bring that camera in closer and get in cl up close to this mini disc player and see what we've got. Ho -ho! <laughs> right, here it is. So um, I've got my light on at the moment, so the display might not, not look very bright. Actually, it's very vivid, very clear. I may turn the light down at some point so we can look at the display in more detail, but it is very clear, albeit a teeny bit small for my eyes anyway. Uh, it's using a, an AK7712A VQ. It's not a DAC as such, it's a three-in-one. So it's got a DSP, a digital signal processor. It's got a DAC digital to audio converter, and it's got ADC, analog to digital converter, and needs all these to convert, obviously, analog to digital, digital analog, etc., etc. Okay, I, now I got the picture of the DAC actually from another channel. I pinched it off, I took a screenshot of it, of it and that. So I wanna give him a shout out. I don't wanna nick his stuff and not give him a shout out. He does a really good teardown of this um, player. 
So it's well worth having a go look at. It's quite interesting. T it rips it all apart. Amazing. Uh, and I'll put his channel name up here, Board Tech, and I'll put a link down in the description below to that video. Uh, the compression it uses is A-Track, if you're not familiar with that, and that's Adaptive Transform Acoustic Coding, and that gives you the ability to uh, get a whole CD on a smaller disc, and that's how they did it with that A-Track compression. So from the right, we're going to start with the power, power on off. You've got a timer, you can time it, you time it to play, time it to record. You've got digital noise reduction here. God, I cut my finger earlier, look at that. Just noticed that on a knife. Here we are, digressing. Um, we've got a digital noise reduction here. Now you, you won't need to use this when recording CD or I doubt it very much. It's more for when you're recording analog, maybe off a tape deck, get a bit of noise and that will take the edge off it. AB I think is when you're doing editing or playing, you can get it to start and finish at certain points of the disc. Uh, then you've got um, input selector. Now the input selector, it's on optical at the moment. Can you see that if I turn the light down? It's on optical at the moment. I'll turn in a half, half brightness, okay? And up here, oh, next to it, you've got DAC mode. So it says DAC, the input coming in is 44.1 kilohertz, okay, for the optical. Now if I change the input selector to analog, uh, the DAC is analog, it says it's analog there, that would be coming from, say, a tape deck. And I put the indicator to coaxial, and it says DAC unlocked, unlock. And that basically means is it's nothing, no signal. And that's because there's no coaxial connected. But I'll put it back into optical. And we've got the DAC mode there at 44.1 kilohertz. Got your display here. I need to put a disc in. Let's pop a disc in here. So you've got name clip here, and you can copy the name of the thing, uh, name of the disc, to the memory of the player. Then you've got display characters. So it's got no name at the moment. So it tells you it's got no name. Um, it tells you how much is on the track and whatever, and if it's playing. Uh, I haven't named it yet. I'm going to come to that in a second. Then you've got record play mode. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Like I said, this is a learning curve for me, but. When you do that, you've got digital volume. You can go to mono, mon menu, menu, <laughs> mono, okay. Oh, hang on a minute, gone off. Digital volume, mono, uh, mono there. You can have minus 40 dB. Uh, you can have medley. You can turn the medley on or off. So that's on, that's off. Now the medley, I think, is, um, and also you've got your fader on, off, and that'll fade in and out of tracks. Your medley's off and on. So the medley, I think, is like a DJ. So what happens is, is that it fades into the next track. So if you, if it's not, if it's a CD you've recorded and it's got gaps, it'll actually fade into the next track. We'll try that out later. So have we got it on? Let's have a look. Yeah, I've got the med I'll turn it off a minute. Okay. Get that off, 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 off. There we are. This also acts as. Um, a skip track, so I can skip track here, okay? Also as well, uh, it does, it skips for 15 seconds, it jumps, so it jumps the track 15 seconds, 60 seconds. So if I set it to 15 seconds, it'll jump from here to plus 15, plus 30, et cetera, et cetera, the same when they do 60 seconds. Let's turn it off. There we are. It also acts as a digital record level. So um, basically, you don't need to use a record level for digital recording normally. Okay. Uh, oh, what's this playing now? Is this stop that? So if you're recording and you find that it's a pre-recorded uh, uh, CD, you shouldn't have to use it. The, the volume level should be fine. But say someone's done recorded it themselves. Um, and you find that the volume level is a bit quiet, you can change that and it can go as high as plus, D, uh, plus 12 dB. So if you want to get it a bit higher, but you've got to be careful not to peak it or go above you know, the recording levels. Obviously then you've got your analog recording levels for analog. 
And on the front here, then we've got the headphones. Uh, the headphones sound okay. Good for editing as well. You know, you want to listen directly to it. And then obviously you've got your uh, play, pause, forward, etc., etc. record. Okay, let's give this disc a name. Right, so you press name here, boink, and then you can just go through here then. There we are, let's get my arm out of the way. And enter it there using this button. There you go, enter that. If you make a mistake, you can always press edit, no, no, and let's delete that then. You press name again and that should save it then. Okay, there we are. And I think when you press eject then, it puts the name onto the disc. I believe so. There we are. It's right, UTOC writing. So hopefully when I put it in now, it should be named UTV. <laughs> Yeah, check it out. <laughs> right, there are some tracks on this disc because I was messing around earlier, re uh, practicing recording some tracks and things. So I've got some tracks on that I don't want. So I want to erase them. I want to erase the whole disc. So obviously I make sure that the little tab on it is pushed across uh, and you press edit and then you get the jog wheel then and get the, it should be all erase, press that and then press it again and now I got a blank disc. Sweet. So now I got a blank disc. What we want to do now is record from my CD to the mini disc. Didn't that raise quite quickly then, didn't it? <laughs> there you go. Right, I've got my blank disc in. I made sure the little tab is pushed across so we can record onto it. And go into record two tracks from my CD player. This is from YouTube library that I've recorded on the CD. I've got my CD player setting pause ready to rock and roll, to go, okay? Now what I gotta do now is press record here. It won't do anything yet until I've got everything set up, okay? When I press play, it'll start recording. So I'll start recording now. Press play on here. And there you go, it's recording. So I'll leave it record those two tracks and come back to it now. A little longer than a few minutes later. And there you go. Right, but how well does it record? Uh, on paper, CD is the superior format, um, some-wise, on paper, but can you hear those differences audibly with your own ears? So I've recorded uh, some tracks off a CD from my CD player onto uh, the mini disc player. And then what I've done then is record directly out of each machine uh, using an audio capture device into Audacity, saving it as a WAV file so you get the best reproduction possible. Anyway, let's have a listen to this.
And there you go. So what do you think? There was a sound difference, uh, but I recorded from each machine separately. So that could be the DAX producing that different sound signature. Uh, I thought the mini disc was a little bit more forward in the mid range, just slightly. Um, but apart from that, I recorded the, um, recorded the music really well. Not a lot of difference, really. Uh, but the implementation of the DAX and the DAX themselves could be making that difference. I don't know. It might not just be re the recording. Uh, but it recorded really well, and it plays and sounds really good. Uh, it's a fun machine to use, although, like I've said before, a bit of a learning curve. It's a lot to take in. I mean, the instruction manual is 50 pages thick. Uh, and you see these, <laughs> you know... My daughter's saying, oh, older people, they don't know how to use phones and don't know how to use computers and blah, 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 right? Blah, blah, blah. Um, I dare them to try and have a go at this. <laughs> I think they'd struggle. <laughs> there we go. Anyway, that's come to the end of the video. I will catch you in the next one. I did promise you earlier that we would look at the medley DJ function. To be fair, it's not that good. <laughs> so I've got it on, the medley function is on, and this is what it does. I'll, sh uh, I'll play you a sample now. <laughs> and that's all it is. So I thought it would actually mix it together like a proper DJ. <laughs> but unfortunately not. Kind of fades it in and fades it out. It does start the song a bit quicker, but it's not that great. I mean, I don't know why I would use that. Let's try it with it off. Right, off, okay. All right, come on. So not much of a difference really, but there you are, that's what it is.